It's no secret that myself and a lot of other people out there are huge fans of the Steam Deck, and you know, this is one of my go-to gaming devices right now, but there is one thing that's been bugging me about it, it's just way too easy to use. So I'm going to ditch the Steam Deck for the LeapFrog Leapster GS. In this video, we're going to be installing RetroArch on this device, and if you're not familiar with it, then you probably don't have kids, or you're too old to have received one of these as a gift from your grandma for either your birthday or Christmas. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be getting some retro games up and running on the Leapster GS from LeapFrog. Now this was a device that was released at the end of 2012, beginning of 2013. My mother-in-law purchased this for my oldest daughter and she did enjoy it. I mean, she used it for about six months and then we kind of forgot about it. It was sitting up in a toy box, but recently it was brought to my attention that there is firmware out there that allows us to install RetroArch on this device. Specs are very minimal. Again, this was released in 2013 does have a built-in touch screen, and basically this was a handheld learning machine for young children. It's got an ARM9 CPU clocked at around 400 megahertz, and I think we have 512 megabytes of RAM here. It's a cartridge-based system, but I think from their website you could install a few games over USB, and uh, yeah, I mean, not a super powerful unit whatsoever. There's a couple games installed here, and uh, this is kind of one of those little pet simulator games. But as you can see, I think the cat's body is missing. I'm not sure if this was intentional or not, but uh, yeah, I'm ready to get some retro games up and running on this. There's even a core for PlayStation 1, and with the firmware we're going to be using, it's actually going to overclock the CPU up to 800 megahertz in this unit. Now to install this firmware, I'm going to be using Linux, I'll be using my Ubuntu laptop, but you can do this with Windows also. And I'm going to tell you right now, using the Windows method may be easier for a lot of people out there. Um, I'll leave some links in the description, but one of the best resources to get this installed on your Leapster is this YouTube channel right here. Retro Leap for Leapfrog Leapsters. He's come up with a bunch of different scripts that allow you to do this in Windows 10 at least. I haven't tried it in Windows 11 or 10, I just did it with Linux. But if you don't have access to a Linux machine and you just want to try it with Windows, definitely follow his tutorials. Once you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty easy to install Retro Leap on these Leapster devices, but the hardest part for me was finding a micro USB cable. Uh, these have basically gone extinct in my house. We've got USB-C and some micro USB still left over, but mini USB was really hard to track down. If you're using Linux, the first thing you want to do is head over to the Retro Leap GitHub page. Link for this is in the description. All the commands you need to run in Linux to get this up and running are listed right here on the front page. From Terminal, first thing I wanted to do was clone the SSH Flash application that they have. This is going to put it right in our home directory. So now we've got a new folder called SSH Flash. Next thing we want to do is download the RetroLeap files. So there's two ways of going about this. You can get the stock RetroLeap files if you want to directly from the GitHub. Or if you want the overclock version, which actually does perform better and has more cores installed, you're going to go with the overclocked version. RetroLeap OC, this is going to bring the CPU speed up to a blazing 800 megahertz instead of around uh, like 400, maybe 450, not exactly sure. So we're going to download this source.zip. We'll need to extract it and place those files we just extracted in our SSH flash folder that we uh, downloaded through Terminal. So I'm going to go ahead and extract this. And this is the one that does come preloaded with a better Game Boy Advance emulator and PlayStation 1. So we'll just place it right there. I'm almost ready to flash, but I do need to enable USB mode on the Leapster GS. So this is kind of a USB host mode. And in order to do this, we're going to plug it in and we're going to hold the hint button, L, R, and press the power one time. This is going to put us into kind of host mode. So now we're connected to the Linux PC and we can actually flash this using SSH flash and retro leap. So we're just going to run the SSH flash dot SH. It's going to give us a couple choices here. I want to choose number three because I'm using the Leapster GS. Couple options, but uh, you know, with that overclock firmware, this only works with the Leapster GS. So I'm just going to go with number three, press enter. And since I didn't run this as root, it's actually going to ask me for my uh, Linux PC's password. I'll go ahead and put that in. And then it's going to start the flashing process, which can take about three minutes. Once the flash is finished, it'll automatically reboot the system. And we're now running RetroArch on the Leapster GS. 
And in order to get your ROMs transferred over, you're going to use something like WinSCP. You can just transfer it directly over the data cable, but it's going to be connected to the PC as kind of a network device. Now from here, we've got some cores that we can choose from. And uh, given the speed of the CPU, even though we're overclocked, PlayStation 1 is still going to be slow, but we've got NES, SNES, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, there's Atari 800, and a bunch of other cores if you use the overclock firmware. I haven't tested a ton of emulators on this just yet, but I did want to show a few of my favorites running. And I've already got a few games installed, so let's go ahead and start up a Game Boy Advance game. It's going to load right into it. And as you can see, I mean, the Leapster GS itself has that kind of older Game Boy Advance aesthetic, so the button layout is perfect for these type of games. All right, here it is. I did uh, enable the FPS overlays, so we can see that the game is running at 60 FPS, but it seems that the screen itself might only be running at 30 hertz, and this would, you know, make sense with a lower end device like this. And of course, you don't run out and buy one of these specifically to install Retro Leap on or for retro emulation. This was just something I had laying around and it was brought to my attention that we can actually install RetroArch on this device, so I figured I'd go ahead and do it. We can get right back into the RetroArch menu. I'm going to go ahead and close this game and we'll do one more GBA game and then we'll test out a few more emulators. I completely understand that it doesn't take a lot to run these lower end emulators like Game Boy, SNES, NES, and even Game Boy Advance, but it's still pretty impressive seeing it running on this, you know, learning device here. Next up, we've got some NES, one of my favorite games, Adventure Island, and performance here really isn't that bad. I mean, we've got the same layout as a Game Boy Advance. Obviously, this D-pad isn't going to be as good, but uh, I might be able to make it through this first stage. Nope. Altered Beast, Sega Genesis, and there are volume buttons on the bottom of this unit. That's going to be your start and select. But uh, all these buttons have been mapped at least with the uh, overclock firmware that I'm using here. And even if you needed a couple extra buttons, as you can see, like the Genesis had a three button layout. We've got this button right by the hint up top. It's going to be my punch button. And finally, PlayStation 1, which as you can see, isn't running at full speed, even with a really easy to emulate game. And I went with this because it's a very low ROM size, and we don't have much storage to work with on the Leapster GS. I think it's 500 megabytes. So yeah, it's definitely possible to install RetroArch on one of these Leapster GSs. They also make a tablet version, and uh, RetroLeap is compatible with that. Is it worth doing? I mean, if you've got one laying around that's not being used for anything else, it's a cool little project. I mean, it takes a little bit of time. It's kind of fun to do. Is it a Steam Deck killer? Of course it's not. I mean, would I ever replace my Steam Deck with the Leapster GS? No way. I mean, I could never do that. But if you've got one of these, it's not being used for anything else, then yeah, you can install Retro Leap on it. All links for everything I mentioned in the video are in the description. And if you've got any questions, let me know down below. But that's it for this one. Like always. Thanks for watching.